Now we love talking about crazy high-end power supplies like that AX1500i that we checked out a while back before throwing it off of a roof to allegedly test its packaging or something, but with computers trending towards being smaller and more efficient all the time, is the age of the massive 1200 plus watt power supply that's cooled by like immersing it in oil or something over? By the way, uh, make sure you're subscribed because our oil-cooled PC build blog is coming soon, but um, you can go now. Back to this, what about building physically much smaller power supplies that leverage modern technology to deliver enough power for a high-end rig without overdoing it? This is Silverstone's SX600G, a 600 watt fully modular SFX power supply with 80 plus gold certified efficiency. Pretty sweet. The Cooler Master Neptune 240M features an exclusive pump design and their new Silencio fans to provide impressive near silent performance. Click now to learn more. So here's the unit. It's SFX, which means that it's designed for small compact cases like the Silverstone ML07 that I have in front of me here. And it's got the same kind of specs that we'd have expected to find in a high-end full-sized ATX power supply only a few short years ago, except that it's absolutely tiny. Like it's hidden away in there. We're talking 80 plus gold efficiency, a fully modular interface with these sexy, easier to cable manage black cables, a single 12 volt rail capable of delivering a maximum of 50 amps so the entire capacity of the power supply can be used to feed a graphics card, an intelligent cooling fan curve with a silent mode where the 80 millimeter fan doesn't even spin under 45 degrees celsius, and well is that not enough for you? So because we lack the gear to do detailed full power supply reviews I thought why not just Approach it from a different angle and give you guys some inspiration by building the most heavy duty power sucking machine that we can in an ITX case. So we started with actually using one of Silverstone's own CPU coolers here. You can see that there's not going to be a whole lot of wasted space in this build with CPU memory, built in sound card and uh, not a whole lot of room for much of anything else here. Um, building in this system is very similar to the RVZ01, so Silverstone's Raven 01 case because the internal chassis is the same, so you pull out the drive cage and GPU bracket thing. Uh, there's a PCI Express riser so that you can install the graphics card, you pull out the power supply mount, and it uses a pass-through cable so that you plug it in at the back of the case just like normal, but there's actually an internal AC power cable that plugs into the back of the power supply. Now, this is a benefit of a modular power supply that a lot of people don't really think about when you're working on a tight build. Instead of having to have the cable come out of the power supply and then put in the motherboard and then try to plug the power supply into the board, you can plug into the board first when you're in a situation where there's really not going to be a lot of room to access it later. Then you can leave those ends loose and plug, plug them into the back of the power supply later on. So it's pretty, pretty tightly packed in here. We can have a look at where the power supply gets its ventilation from the back side of the case here, just like that. And you can actually put feet on the bottom so you can lay it down like this and it still won't suffocate. And then exhaust is actually out these holes in the top right here. We actually found that it stayed extremely cool, even under the most intensive loads that we could throw at it using the system. Speaking of intensive loads, we went with an R9290 from Gigabyte. It's got a wind force cooler on it, so we're basically torturing this system by putting one of the highest power consumption cards that we could and then overclocking it to 1.144 gigahertz in order to do all of our testing. But first, here's just a bit of a look at the overall overall finished build, how compact everything is there. You can see the graphics cards pulling in nice fresh air from the outside, the CPU is pulling in fresh air from the outside, power supplies pulling in fresh air from the outside, and other than that, everything else is just passive exhaust on this case. So What's the conclusion here? Is there a conclusion? Well, yeah, there is, because we went with a 4670K. We overclocked the stuffing out of it, considering the 
compactness of our CPU cooler. So we got that up to around 4.6 gigahertz. We overclocked our GPU as high as we could go without artifacting. We fired up Prime 95 small FFT and Far Cry 3. And the most we could get sustained load was about 480 watts from the wall, which means that the actual power supply was even then only working at just over two thirds of its total capacity and wasn't getting very warm at all. In fact, we took our thermal probe and aimed it at the inside of the power supply as best we could. It's really hard to get at in there. And the highest temperature reading we could get from there was around 29 degrees Celsius. Pretty darn frosty. And at idle, that fan never even turned on. So that was at about 100 watts load. Very impressive. And I'd love to hear your guys' comments under the video. Do you really think there's still a place in the world for power supplies that are like these 1500 watt monsters? Or do you think something like this makes more sense for your next gaming rig and going with something more compact? I just want to hear your guys' thoughts. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Leave a comment under the video letting me know the stuff I just asked before. Also check Check out the link in the video description. You can give us a monthly contribution to help us make more videos for you. Buy a cool t-shirt like this one or change your Amazon bookmark to one with our affiliate code so that whenever you buy power supplies or graphics cards or CPUs or whatever else, we get a small kickback. That kind of thing helps us out a lot. Thanks again for watching. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.